The year is 1968. Groovy, far out times of starshine and moonshots. The age of Aquarius and black power. Counterculture and campus unrest. At the Ohio State University, there is a generation gap. Coach Woody Hayes begins his 18th season at OSU with only a handful of upperclassmen. Spearheading the seniors are offensive tackles Dave Foley and Rufus Mays. Punishingly precise, both blockers will be proclaimed All-America by season's end. But the bulk of Woody's lineup is a roster full of sophomores. Woody will be forced to start at least a dozen, and in an era of freshman ineligibility, that many unseasoned sophomores is usually a recipe for disaster. Fortunately, Woody surrounds the squad with a brilliant coaching staff, including Lou Holtz, Earl Bruce, Lou McCullough, and Bill Mallory. Still, as the season begins, Woody is struggling to get his team into focus. Tickets cost $6 for the season opener against Southern Methodist University. Coach Hayden Fry's Mustangs target Ohio State's sophomore laden secondary. But the attack backfires. SMU's 76 passes set a stadium record, but the Bucks nab five interceptions. And the fiery pass rush corrals the Mustang quarterback. Here, sophomore defensive end Mark DeBevic nails a safety. Sophomore Rex Kern is Woody's quarterback, a dazzling ball handler, a dangerous runner. Kern's greatest talent is leadership. Indeed, Kern is about to give Woody more than he bargained for. Early in the game, this is what the Buckeyes do on third down. That's right, conservative Woody Hayes occasionally punts on third down. In fact, the Bucks have already logged two third down punts when Kern is sacked on this third down play late in the second quarter. Any coach who likes to punt on third down has to punt on fourth down. Woody sends in punter Mike Sensiball. Kern sends Sensiball right back to the bench. The crowd is delighted. The coach is flabbergasted. Kern lines up his team and calls for a pass. Finding his receivers covered, Kern somehow, some way, makes the first down to a standing ovation. A few plays later, Kern hits Dave Brungard for the touchdown. Truly, this young team has found its leader. Of course, Kern has the help of other talented sophomores, like high-stepping John Brockington. as well as sophomore tight end Dick Coon. Not to be outdone, junior halfback Dave Brungard glides to his second scoring reception and bulldogs his way to a third TD. The final scoreboard eases a lot of preseason jitters. Seven days later, 
big plays and high caliber defense help the Bucks bag the Oregon Ducks. The game has barely begun when Mike Pulaski blocks an Oregon punt, snares it, and waltzes home with six. When the visitors finally get a punt airborne, Larry Zelina returns it 37 yards, which sets up Ohio State's second touchdown. A 35-yard romp by junior fullback Jim Otis. When Kern is hurt, sophomore quarterback Ron Masajowski seems determined to prove himself. This 55-yard strike to Bruce Jankowski, yet another sophomore, is proof positive. Lacking experience, this young Buckeye team doubles up on desire. So dominant is the defense in this 21-6 victory, Oregon is unable to gain even one first down the entire second half. But hold tight. The acid test of this green defense looms dead ahead. In 1967, Purdue had humiliated Ohio State 41 to 6. In 1968, Purdue is the nation's number one team. Quarterback Mike Phipps fronts a murderously sophisticated passing attack. Phipps' favorite receiver, halfback Leroy Keyes, boldly boasts, no one can cover me one-on-one. -on -one. Sophomore defensive back Jack Tatum takes that as a personal challenge. The odds makers, however, don't give Tatum or the Buckeyes much of a chance. Before a record-setting crowd, Ohio State takes the field. A 13-point underdog. Right from the opening kickoff, this game packs a wallop. Ohio State pounds downfield. Brockington streaks to the Purdue 16. But a holding call moves the ball back to the 31. Jan White makes the catch and kicks loose to the 11. But a clip costs 15 more yards. Sophomore mistakes are sinking OSU. Kern scrambles inside the 10. But a chip shot shanks right. Purdue's first offensive play is ominous. Phipps finds keys for 13 yards. Dave Whitfield brings the Boilermakers back to earth. After Purdue punts, the Buckeyes battle back. But once more, OSU comes up too long and too short. As the game moves through the second period, it's obvious Leroy Keyes has met his match. Every move he makes, Keyes can feel Jack Tatum literally breathing down his neck. After Purdue misses a pair of field goals, the Buckeyes begin their longest drive of the day. Mixing the run and the pass, they move 81 yards to the Purdue 7. With seconds remaining in the half, OSU is perfectly positioned for the game's first score. 
but weak place kicking will be the Achilles heel of this team all season. After 30 hard hitting minutes, this game is still up in the air. In the second half, Tatum continues to lock up Leroy Keyes. When OSU rotates the coverage, Keyes looks open. Phipps fires. Ted Provo speeds up for the interception and the touchdown. Ohio State leads by six. Eight minutes later, sophomore Jim Stillwagon intercepts on the Purdue 26. A shaky six-point lead says it all. The Buckeyes must score. Jim Otis muscles closer. Then, disaster strikes. Forced out of bounds, Rex Kern hurts his wrist. Lately, senior quarterback Bill Long has been bumped to third straight. But Woody wants experience. Long hurries in. His first play, Long drops back. He spots an open road to the goal line. He goes for it. Touchdown. The conversion adds a touch of irony. Ohio State now leads by the same margin they were supposed to lose by. According to Woody Hayes, defense wins the upsets. Woody will call this the greatest defensive effort he has ever seen. Purdue is held to only 100 passing yards and 57 yards rushing. Ohio State has whitewashed the number one team in the nation. And after 16 minutes of tension, the lid pops off. Ohio Stadium goes wild. Even Woody Hayes is carried away by the victory. The field floods with gleeful fans. We're number one, they shout. We're number one. We're number one. The following week, reality sets in. Ohio State is rated number four. A Northwestern has an early lead. But watch out, Wildcats. The Buckeyes are catching up. Jack Tatum saves the touchdown. Kern's 72 yarder to Jan White is the longest pass of the year. The offense smoothly accumulates 565 yards. Woody has even figured out a remedy for the kicking game. It's called not kicking. When Mesa Jowski hits a happy Ed Bender, there's no doubt about it. This team is on the road. At Illinois, the beat goes on. Jim Rowan kicks the season's first field goal. The Illini, who had beaten the Bucks in 66 and 67, seem today totally stymied. Midway through the first half, the Ohio line is opening huge holes. No 
fullback ever exploded into a hole faster or harder than Jim Otis. After Otis scores, Kern picks his way to two more touchdowns. Leading 24 to nothing, Ohio State is unstoppable. But the second half is a whole new ballgame. The suddenly fighting Illini tally 24 unanswered points. That's 24 the hard way. Three straight touchdowns followed incredibly by three straight two-point conversions all on the ground. Less than five minutes remaining. The score is tied, 24 all. Sniffing an upset, the hostile Illinois crowd yelps for another Buckeye scout. On the next crucial series, Kern is knocked cold. Mesa Jowski hurries off the bench. He hits Zelina for 10 yards. On third and six, Masajowski rolls wide for the first down. Then he spots Zelina, wide open and waiting in the Illinois backfield. Otis thunders home for the go-ahead touchdown. With 40 seconds left, sophomore safety Mike Sensiball leaps for a stirring interception and ices the win. The following week, the season's second record-setting crowd settles in for the invasion of the Michigan State Spartans. Mike Sensiball is still sizzling. In the first quarter, it's Sensiball on the interception. Moments later, Sensiball fields the fumble. When the Spartans threaten, First down on the Ohio 19, Sensabaugh tips this pass to Mike Pulaski. Wary of MSU's rushing defense, Ohio State takes to the air. Jankowski's 39-yard reception is inches short. Otis takes the touchdown. Early in the second quarter, Jankowski gets his, stretching for a fingertip touchdown. Re-injured, Kern exits. Still, after the Spartan score, a third Buckeye touchdown makes the halftime lead seem almost comfortable. Almost. Provost opens the second half with Ohio State's third interception. But the Spartans are starting to turn the table. Minutes later, three Buckeyes are unable to stop this spectacular grab. Michigan State is five points away. Sparked by Leo Hayden's reception, the Bucks fire back. It's goal to go on the three. Mesa Jowski will not be denied. However, Ohio State's try for two is shot down. 
there's still plenty of spunk left in these Spartans. After they score, an alert Ted Provost trips up their two-point try. Once more, Michigan State is within a touchdown. Like heavyweight boxers, both teams have fought toe-to-toe -to -toe for 45 minutes. Now a combination, junior defensive ends Mike Radke and Dave Whitfield will stagger the Spartans once and for all. Here, Radke sacks the quarterback. Whitfield smothers the fumble. Later, Radke drops the quarterback once more. The reverberating knockout punch comes when Radke gets the sack and Whitfield gets the football. The Spartans are down for the count. As Michigan State's Duffy Doherty congratulates Woody, from somewhere way out west wafts the first faint smell of roses. In Wisconsin's cold Camp Randall Stadium, Woody deploys his troops for their first ever battle on artificial turf. Masajowski starts at quarterback. He hits Zelina drifting across the middle for 37 yards, positioning the Bucks for a field goal. Oh yes, Woody likes what he sees. Next possession. Masajowski calls the same play. This time, Zelina tight ropes for 42 yards. Now, Masajowski to Zelina clicks for six. OSU's five second half touchdowns put the game away. Only once do the Badgers maneuver into scoring territory. Ohio's defense is so aroused, not even the referee is safe. Final score, Ohio State 43, Wisconsin 8. The biggest victory margin of the season. Iowa City is a rainy 38 degrees, not fit for man nor beast. The Hawkeyes have trouble holding on to the pigskin. But sure-handed OSU will not fumble all day. Despite the gloom, the Buckeyes keep their eyes fixed on one shining goal. Each first down, each touchdown, moves Ohio State closer to a Big Ten title showdown. For the first time all season, a healthy Rex Kern is able to play an entire game. Iowa cannot derail Ohio State's destiny. Now, Woody Hayes is gripped by one obsession. Now comes that team from up north. It is the season's third record-breaking crowd. 85,371 fans jam the giant horseshoe. For the bitterest feud in college football, Ohio State is rated number two in the nation. Michigan is number four. Both teams are tied atop the Big Ten. The winner goes to the Rose Bowl. The loser goes home. The hitting says it all. This isn't just football. This is Ohio State versus Michigan. In a game like this, there's no holding back. Watch Jack Tatum run down the Michigan tailback. After the Wolverines draw first blood, 
Zelina's 52-yard return electrifies the Buckeyes. On fourth down from the Michigan Five, Otis plugs into the end zone. Early in the second quarter, a short punt has given the Bucks good field position. Calling his own number, Kern struggles to the five. Kern on the keeper. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Ohio State takes the lead. When Michigan ties the score, the Bucks begin an 86-yard, 17-play drive. The pounding heartbeat of that drive is Ohio fullback Jim Otis. Like a red-hot piston, Otis pops through the Michigan line. Otis slashes through the Wolverines, ramming, slamming, battering his way closer to the goal. Michigan knows he's coming, but they can't stop him. Otis for the touchdown. Watch out, Wolverines. The best is yet to come. Larry Zelina lights the fuse on a second half of unforgettable fireworks. Zelina zooms left for 29 yards. Left again for 21 yards. Right guard Jim Strickland pulls out and clears the way for Zelina's touchdown. Meanwhile, Michigan's sputtering offense is shut out and shut down. In the fourth quarter, Big Blue is buried under a blizzard of Buckeye power. First, Jim Roman boots the longest field goal of the season. In a flurry of confetti, the Bucks hit like they want the ball back. They get it when linebacker Doug Adams twists out of the crowd with the interception. Six plays later, Kern knifes in for the score. After OSU holds the Wolverines, a huge hole opens for Ray Gillian, who rockets 40 yards. Jim Otis plows in to pay dirt. On the next play from scrimmage, Art Burton intercepts. Five plays later, Otis scores his fourth touchdown of the day and his record-shattering 16th of the season. The carnage is complete. For the first time in 11 years, Ohio State is going to the Rose Bowl. It's party time.
next to the grim Midwest, California looks like the land of Oz. Real flower power. By now, Woody Super Sophomores are being called the best college football team ever recruited. Southern California answers with the most exciting player in the game. Two-time All-American O.J. Simpson owns the 1968 Heisman Trophy. O.J.'s USC Trojans are reigning national champions, appearing in their third straight Rose Bowl. USC is America's number two team. Ohio State at last is number one. But forget the numbers. Here, the national crown will be won not in the polls, but on the playing field. This is it, a fight to the finish for the national championship. Initially, OSU is bottling up OJ and hobbling the Trojan quarterback. On offense, Ohio State attacks straight up the middle. Center John Muleback guards Alan Jack and Brian Donovan stab at the heart of the Trojan defense. Rex Kern rocks Southern California like a one-man earthquake. In scoring territory, however, inches turn into yards. OSU opens the second quarter with the game's first scoring opportunity. But the kick strays in the direction of Disneyland. USC takes over. How vital is OJ to the Trojan attack? Watch these successive third down plays. Third down seven on the Trojan 23. Simpson catches the pass for a first down. Three plays later, third down seven again. Simpson again. When it's third and three on the Ohio 30, OJ keeps it on the ground. And when it's third and four on the Ohio 19, OJ on the receiving end once more. Only a spectacular stop by Tatum keeps him out of the end zone. First and goal on the Ohio 3. Who gets the ball now? Every soul in the Rose Bowl knows. First down, OJ goes nowhere. Second down, he loses a yard. Third down, O.J. hurries a wobbly pass. After a brilliant goal line stand, the Bucks are down three to nothing. After a Buckeye punt, USC takes over on the 20. Now watch, the defense has this play diagnosed and plugged up. But O.J. slices through, he cuts back. Like a genie, O.J. pops out of the bottle for an 80-yard magic carpet ride. The Trojans are on top, 10 to nothing. Time for the Buckeyes to go to work. Leo Hayden returns the kickoff to the 31. OSU starts to drive. They keep it on the ground. Nothing fancy, just grinding straight ahead power football. Woody Hayes football. It is as if the Buckeyes are saying, this is the way we play the game in Ohio. Go on, try and stop us. When Kern finally puts the ball in the air, he hits Ray Gillian. 
first and goal at the three. Otis trampolines over the top. Trojans 10, Ohio State 7. A minute 45 remaining in the half. USC's hurry up offense is rushed off the field. Bucks have the ball again. Kern connects on two clutch passes. Kajan White for 17 yards. To Ray Gilliam for 19 yards. Three seconds left. OSU has missed 70% of its field goals this season. Now, long holds. Roman nails it. It's good. At halftime, the score is tied. practices and a thousand plays since the season began. 30 minutes separate one of these teams from the national championship. If the defense has their say, that team will be Ohio State. USC's air game is grounded. And the juice gets every which way but loose. On their third possession of the third quarter, the Buckeyes keep the ball on the ground, chewing up the clock. Wearing down the wearying Trojans. Fourth and two at the eight yard line. Jim Roman kicks OSU into the lead. Later, Bill Urbanic pounds the ball loose. Vic Stottlemyre recovers in the USC 21. Once again, Rex Kern proves himself the master of the broken play. The drive continues into the fourth quarter. Leo Hayden is open. The pass is there. The Bucks lead by 10. In a deep hole, the Trojans turn to, who else? The Juice. Mark Steyer strips the ball. Pulaski recovers. The offense takes the field, looking for the clincher. The Trojans blitz. Kern dumps the ball to Gilliam. Ohio State touchdown. And the celebration begins. Desperate Trojans go long. Mike Sensabaugh shows why he is still Ohio State's all-time interception leader. Four minutes later, the Trojans are in scoring territory. O.J. floats a pass. Tim Anderson intercepts. Ohio State's storybook season is headed for a happy ending. Although the Trojans are awarded a score on this controversial call, the hay, as Woody Hayes would say, is in the barn.
after the game, O.J. Simpson burst into the Ohio State locker room. You're the best damn team in the country, shouts O.J. The wire services make it official. Undisputed national champions, the 1968 Ohio State Buckeyes are hailed by the Associated Press as the college football team of the decade.